So welcome to Career Forces Explore Careers Special Edition Women in Construction Week in celebration of Women in Construction Week across the country, March 7th through uh, 15th, 2021. Today is Tuesday, March 9th, and I'm so glad to have all of you on the call. Uh, as I mentioned, it is national, uh, well, the National Association of Women in Construction and the Minnesota chapter celebrate this week. And for years, I've attended some of the in-person events and never would I thought that I would be hosting our own um, event within this week. So I am just thrilled to be here. NAWIC is dedicated to enhancing the success of women in the construction industry by building educations, careers, futures, and lives. So you can go ahead and if you haven't signed up for other NAWIC Women in Construction events, uh, go to their website and look um, at everything that's coming up. And I'll, I'll talk about a few of those at the end of this um, webinar here too. Governor Walls did proclaim this week as Women in Construction Week. So we're always welcome, we're always thrilled when we get that designation. And also on NAWIC's MSP's chapter, um, there's a shout out from Commissioner Steve Grove, Commissioner of the Department of Employment and Economic Development, my boss, so to speak. Um, anyway, so he gives a really great video. I'm not gonna play it here, but I encourage all of you to go to that and, and listen to it. So I'll post the link in just a minute. Companies today joining us are 218 Trades Association, Marvin, Ryan Companies, and SM Henches. So thrilled to have just, you know, a couple of the companies across the state that hire in the construction field and who have been breaking ground on um, hiring more and more women. So first of all, I would like to welcome Amanda Voller of 2 and 8 Trades in Northeast Minnesota Office of Jobs and Training. Um, she's gonna give us an overview of some of the training opportunities, how they serve women in Northern Minnesota. Amanda, are you there? I'm ready, can you hear me okay? Yes, great. Thanks for having, or thanks for being here today. Yeah, yeah. I just want to thank everybody for being on here today. And this is kind of a cool event um, that you have going on um, to focus on women. And um, a, on, what's surprising is our two and eight trades organization, our committee that we have. Actually, there's only one male in our committee, so it's kind of cool. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for being here. I am a career counselor. I work in the Aiken and Grand Rapids offices. Uh, my coworker Renee Prout is also on here today, and she is a career counselor that works up in the uh, Virginia office. And so I apologize a little bit. This is a brand new presentation, so I might cheat and look at a couple notes, but um, let's get right into it today. All right, so we're going to talk about the four P's in the trade. And so our program is possible because of the program area that we serve and that they are really support the mission and believe that we have the power to make a difference in the community and in the job seekers. The Northeast Minnesota projects are what drives the construction industry. The constant growth, the change is not only important for our economic growth, but it's also really important to revitalize our community. And so we would be not, we would be nowhere without the people, right? The trades people are who get the job done. So we'll go a little bit more into that. All right, so this is a map of our support area. And so we're called Northeast Minnesota Office of Job Training. So in our Northeast region is Aiken to Carleton, up to Cooch and over to Cook. However, we are starting to spread our wings. We are um, talking with the Pine County, some Pine County schools next month. We also have presented to the Cook County and Crow Wing County, multiple schools um, and different organizations about 2 and 8 trades as well. So we are expanding 2 and 8 came about because we serve the 2 and 8 area code, but we are finding ourselves really expanding beyond that as well. Oh, 
you clicked. That's okay. So really the 20 trades, um, we have a lot of sub core, core concepts here, right? Our goal is to provide these core concepts, the support, the community, the guidance, the awareness, the support and access. And then the extension of that core leads to the opportunities for training, education, networking, jobs, and different events. So these are all words that our committee came up with that kind of um, says what 2 and 8 Trades is all about. And we really are here to provide the gap between job seekers and the unions and also support their journey in becoming, becoming an apprentice worker themselves. You can go on to the next slide, Liz. So here are a bunch of projects, and these projects expand from the Iron Range to Duluth. We have the I-35 interchange that's to be announced with COVID. It definitely got pushed back. We have Northland Essentia in the process of being built in Duluth. We have Rock, Rock Ridge School, which is being built up in the Virginia Eveleth area. We have the Bluestone Lofts, and we have the Mech that is under construction. So as you can see, we have 800 and 814 billion non-residential jobs and 551 billion residential jobs just in 2019. That's how, that's how many billions of dollars have been spent. That was 2019, we're already to 2021. 8.6 projected growth for Minnesota for construction by 2026. So we are needing people to not only uh, replace those retirees, but also look at all these big projects that we need possibly even more um, people to join into the trades. And so the trades are so, so needed right now. And these are just a few projects kind of in our region that we chose. Um, the, you know, what else is nice about the trades is it provides a unique sense of accomplishment. Um, you see something from a blueprint and you take it all the way to the finishing projects. Um, and then we have the people. So equally as important as all those projects and work that we just saw, but we have the people. Um, here are just a snapshot of some of the women that are in the trades. Uh, women are really gaining a lot of presence throughout the U.S. You could Google women in construction and you can view a lot of influencing videos um, in social influencers and really um, stories about how women are changing every day in the construction world. There really is a high demand for women in the construction field because many projects uh, have a diversity threshold that they need for their projects. And they either need them to be um, women or people of color. And so what I find really interesting is Duluth is actually taking that action step a little bit further and they are requiring 15% uh, of female or people of color for their jobs. So more than thresholds and requirements, there are many, many, many trades in need of the workers, not just um, construction, like we say, contractors. There's so many parts of that construction or that contractors um, that are in the trades and really it's a place for women to step in and step up. The other really cool benefit that I like is look at the wage, um, the financial benefits of upon the wage above and beyond the wage is something to think about. If you think about um, a lot of private companies will pay you an hourly wage and from that paycheck, they are re taking out the benefits. They're taking out money for healthcare. They're taking out money for 401k. They're taking out money for AFLAC union dues, right? But what's really cool is when you are in a union, you are making 33.99 an hour plus all those benefits on top from the day one that you start with a union apprenticeship. So those are just some kind of tips and um, highlights, I guess I would say, about the construction trades and why it might be an idea for women to check out. Renee, do you have anything to add? Well, I, I think you covered it very well. I think it's the equal equal work for equal pay, which is nice in the apprenticeship program. And um, we see that that um, 
it's, you know, the women are, we're still considered a minority, <laughs> whether we like it or not, no matter what we do, whether we own the business or we work in the business, whatever we are, we're still considered a minority. Um, and we just need to fill these gaps. Um, we, they say that they're looking for 15% of women, women or people of color to fill the, the gaps in Duluth. I believe that that's also here on the range um, with the, okay. with the Rock Ridge going on and the Mech Center in Virginia being built. Um, so, the, you know, just the equal pay for equal work is, is the thing that I think we have to keep in mind when you apply for the apprenticeship. And our 218trades.com is an amazing website for someone to go log into to look around you find, um, well, we have what colleges on there. We also have apprenticeship programs on there. We have the unions on there. We have the how to get in yeah. to the apprenticeships on there. So it's kind of like a one-stop shopping spot yeah. for information. Yeah, and that's a really good thing to point out is, you know, we talked a lot about apprenticeships and unions today, but there's also um, training that you can go to, schools that you can go to, to then decide if you want to go on to union or if you want to just work for contractors. The key about the 218trades.com website is you can view all of the trades and all of the unions in Minnesota in one page. And what the goal is, why we have work here, stay here, play here, is our goal, our mission is we want people to work here if they want, play here if they want, and stay here if they want. Um, they, we don't want people to feel like they have to move far away if they want to get a good job, do the things they want to do, um, and maybe potentially stay where they want to stay. So Dave Cook is our leader, our only male on the team, but he actually runs the 2 and 8 website. So I, anytime you put um, contact us, he would actually get connected. He's a great resource for connecting unions and contractors. And then I put my email on there as well, if you'd like to directly contact me. Um, but Liz, do we have any time for questions or do you want to save that for the end? There's got, I have one more thing if we have, sure. have a second. In the chat, um, Renee, and I don't know how to say your last name, it's K-P-M-A-R, and I'm sorry, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, says it's a sense of accomplishment is true because she's been a welder for 20 years. So she may have some something to say about being a woman working within the construction trades. Yeah, Definitely. you know, the other question coming in is um, how friendly are the trades to people with felonies? It really depends on, on the felonies, but they are opening those doors a lot more than they used to. So it's always yeah. good to check. Um, with that actual trades company, go on to two and eight trades, find the trade that you're thinking about and, and be up and honest with what your felony is and, and go from there. But definitely they're getting much more open because there's a need. Well, and sometimes right. it depends on how long ago it was. Right. So you did something in your early twenties and it's been 10 or 15 years and everything's right. been fine up until now. They're, they're getting a little bit more, like, like Amanda said, they're giving a little more leeway because they understand that people make mistakes, you know? Yes. Great. Thank you. This, this overview is really, really helpful. And the, at the end of the session to at the end of the hour, we'll talk about other associations similar to 218 trades that are in the Metro in the Southern half of the state and other things, but Perfect. I'd like to go ahead and start to hear from some of the companies too. And we'll continue to address some of these other questions coming in about tr uh, training. Um, the first person I'd like to invite to speak is Jen Carlson of Ryan Companies. Hello. Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my name is Jen Carlson. I am a senior project coordinator at Ryan Companies. I've been uh, in the construction industry for 20 plus years. Um, I actually got my background. It was my background was in radio um, broadcasting. I actually went to school for radio broadcasting and completely switched my career and changed my career to a new direction when I went into the construction side and got involved with the construction trades. And so that's kind of where my story begins. But 
let me tell you a little bit more about Ryan Companies. Uh, Ryan Companies, we were founded in 1938. We currently have over 1,500 employees in 15 offices throughout the country. Our type of work ranges from healthcare, industrial, retail, senior living, and national build to suit. Next slide, please. And you'll see Ryan Companies is a bit more than just construction. I know that when we talk about construction, everybody starts to think about hammer and nails and concrete and you know men in hard hats. But the thing I want you to realize is that it's just much more than construction. We have a capital markets department, development, architectural engineer, real estate management, along with our construction team. So careers at Ryan can be all over the board. It can be anywhere from um, our accounting team. We have um, people in our accounting department. We have a marketing team. We have an HR team. And a lot of these people are coming with, with minimal backgrounds of experience in construction. So it's a great way to get into a company. Um, we like to develop and develop our team, serve our clients, and support the community by seeking out individuals with unique backgrounds, uh, different perspectives, different life experiences. It's one of those things that I always tell my intern, uh, you like to tie your shoe one way, and I like to tie my shoe a different way. But if we can work together with our different backgrounds and our different perspectives, we can maybe find the the best way to tie a shoe or the fastest way to do it. So we like to make sure at Ryan Companies that we're getting our background from all over the place. Um, it makes us a unique company and it makes you a strong group. Next slide. But the one thing that I really wanna talk about is career opportunities in the construction trades. Just like the ladies at 218 were talking about, um, Seeking a career in the construction trades, it provides a well-paid job that doesn't require a college degree. Careers in construction can also offer women job security, competitive benefits, paid vacation, and like we've said, the satisfaction of building something that is really making a difference in the communities that we live. There's this long-standing perception that all jobs in the industry we require this extensive physical labor um, and like this horrible environment, like it's really bad and awful and it's snowing out and it's cold, but things have changed so much. Construction really isn't as, there is that element to it, but it's not as much and it's always changing. We're talking now about building, um, they're called modular, modular buildings. So they're building a bathroom in a controlled environment for hotels and then they're shipping it to a job site and installing it on the job site. So the environment is changing. It's it's not what it used to be. And it's construction is no longer an all, all about the manual labor and the idea that women are physically not able to be strong enough to do construction. Next slide. So as the ladies have kind of talked a little bit, there's some really great benefits to the trades and working in construction. So I know that there is that psychological barrier for some women, including myself for a long time, that to enter this type of a job in construction, that it feels like it's a man's job. But you need to know that careers in construction, they're not reserved just for men. What many workers, including women, don't realize is that construction careers are accessible through apprenticeships, um, like they've said, that provide on the, they provide the paid job learning combined with some post-secondary classroom instruction. So the women-focused pre-apprentice programs that have been, have been really successful, and they're increasing the women's access and success in the construction careers. There's groups locally in Minnesota, like Building Strong Communities. Uh, if you're attending the event on Thursday, you'll hear more about them. That's one of those groups that's helping women to be successful in construction careers, not only getting into it, but also what happens after you move out of your, your apprenticeship. They're making sure that you're successful in the long run. So, next slide. 
One thing I want to talk a little bit about what Ryan is doing that I am extremely proud of um, is how we're diversifying the industry. So Ryan started um, some resource groups that are voluntary um, and they are an employee led groups. So it's people who share similar identities, characteristics, backgrounds, interests, or your life experiences. So we started the Women Inclusion Network. So it's a support group for other women. Um, and it's just kind of your networking within the company. But we've also started um, employee resource groups uh, for Black, Latin Americans, veterans, um, LGBTQ+, uh, and anybody else and their allies are open to joining that. We're also really focusing on our recruiting and our internship. So as some of you may have heard, uh, construction was deemed essential throughout the COVID pandemic. So it's allowed us to continue our hiring process and our training on people. So we've been working really hard on offering internships for anyone at our company and hiring anybody that's looking to get careers in the construction industry. We uh, recently did just do a study that 30% uh, of our interns that were hired in 2020 were women. So it is fun to kind of see that change coming with younger women getting involved. We also offer um, company benefits with family being one of our major core values at Ryan. We provide that family friendly benefit that allows flexible work schedules, education assistance, um, parental leave, fertility and adoption assistance programs, along with other making sure that everybody else is able to reach their full potential. Our one big thing that we've been working great on um, that we've been working with all of the unions too is that our our EBI, which is our emerging emerging business inclusion. So we set a 10% goal or greater to have minority women or um, disadvantaged business enterprises. So companies that are ran by those people, we try to make sure that they're included on all of our projects so that we're using those type of subcontractors, that it's a, a woman owned business or a minority owned business. So these are things that I'm really proud of that Ryan's doing to make a difference in the industry. Next slide. So this is my contact information and you will see at the bottom of there, I have our NEWIC website. I am the current president of the Minneapolis St. Paul chapter uh, in Minneapolis, who is helping run and promote these WIC week events. So NEWIC is um, a, the National Association of Women in Construction. And it was formed by um, 13 women who were in Texas that realized other women needed support in this industry. And so they created this organization to help support other women in the industry. It does not need to be com all commercial. It can be residential. Um, it can be somebody that is in the trades. It could be somebody that's in the office. It is just a support group for each other and networking. Um, all of the events that you will hear about this week are for your benefit, for your growth. You do not need to be a member of NAWIC to attend any of our events anytime. Um, and all of our stuff is accessible to everybody on that website. So feel free to reach out to us or connect with us if you ever need to. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Jen. Uh, one question coming in that maybe you can answer is how late is it to make a career shift? Could someone in their early 40s shift into the construction trades or a construction company? Absolutely. I think that, you know, that's kind of some of the benefits of it. You are, we have actually a NAWIC member who she switched her career. She started as, um, I believe she started in kind of an office setting and then went back to becoming um, a bricklayer. So you can change it, it at any time. It, there's no judgment. There isn't this you know, I think about 20 years ago when you started in this industry that one of the things that we would look at when people would apply for jobs is how long they stayed at a job. And there was that judgment of it. I don't think there's that anymore for people. The people don't judge if you change your career path. You know, if I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old and I decide that I want to do something different, 
there isn't that judgment anymore. People now are embracing that and enabling, like enforcing you to do good. And they're going to be there to support you. And the biggest thing is, is that you're going to see companies like, you know, Ryan companies and the ones that are going to talk after me in 218. And you're going to see that we're going to stand right behind those women and say, we will make you successful. We will support you to be successful. So I don't think that there's any judgment on changing your career at any time. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, did you want to add something to that? You jumped in there. You've read that. Yeah. We have so many people that are our job shifting, changing. And um, a lot of the uh, videos that we have found, we've been sharing women in construction all week on our Facebook page. They all have shifted at some point in their life um, because of better pay better future, better benefits. So don't be afraid to career shift if this is something you want to try. I don't think you'll ever regret giving it a try. Great. Thank you. Yes. Um, Janelle Miller, just uh, she is the organizer extraordinaire of this entire week's um, events, and she has posted a link um, I think addressed to the question about getting into the painters unions, the papers, painters jobs, but she said, if you're interested in a future construction trades career, um, you're invited specifically to the Thursday event. And she posted a link there to that. Um, so more information and, you know, as always go to, to the NAWACMSP.org site for all of the events coming up. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for being on the call. Let's move on. Um, I'd like to invite Audrey Mescal from uh, Marvin to present now about what Marvin is doing. Hello, everyone. Yes, thank you so much for having me. My name is Audrey Maskell, and I am, um, I currently work for Marvin in talent acquisition. So I am happy to tell you guys all about Marvin. So just a little bit about Marvin here. We are headquartered out of War Road, Minnesota. Um, but as our next slide will show, we are located all across the country. And it's really exciting to see how quickly we are growing and the opportunities to join us in multiple states. Uh, we are in the manufacturing industry and the, our main product is doors and windows. So uh, just a little bit about Marvin quickly here is that we were established in 1912. And what's really exciting about Marvin is that we are a family owned, family led company. We are currently on our fourth generation of Marvin leadership and we do not foresee this um, going or ending anytime soon. Um, we will continue to be family owned and family led by Marvin. We are in 16 cities with 5,500 employees. We were voted America's most ethical large company. We're number one in JD Power customer satisfaction, and we were voted top 50 most generous workplace. Do you want to just so, like I had mentioned, we are in multiple cities across the country here. Um, so anywhere from War Road, Egan, Fargo, West Fargo, Grafton, Ripley, Tennessee. Denver, Colorado, Roanoke, Virginia, Enfield, Connecticut, Baker City, Oregon, um, Cleveland, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Northwood, Iowa, Delray Beach, Florida. And then we do have a location in Canada. What's really exciting about Marvin is that, you know, you may start in one location and find that you're looking to transition to another part of the country, whether that be for personal or to be closer to family. And what's really exciting is you never have to leave Marvin. Um, if we can find you a, if you're near a location um, and you wanna stay with Marvin, we'd be happy to assist you in transitioning to another location as well as growing with Marvin. So if you find that you wanna start into different roles um, or in different fields within Marvin, you again, you don't have to leave Marvin. We have so many different routes that you can go, whether that be in manufacturing, office, whether that be um, in leadership roles. So that's the really exciting thing about Marvin. Not only are we located across the country, but we will help you in growing into those different roles and really helping you just whatever is best for you, we will help you get there. 
So we are currently hiring, um, and what's really exciting, I know a lot of people have mentioned this um, previously in this presentation, but you do not need experience to be able to excel and to grow with Marvin. So we have a lot of opportunities where we're really looking for strong work ethics, um, the willingness to learn, the willingness to be a great team member and do the right thing while you're out on the floor. Um, but everything outside of that, we will, we will help you succeed. We'll help you learn the different roles and responsibilities and things like that. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just kind of just a glimpse of what we're hiring for. Um, if there's other opportunities that you are or other skill sets that you're interested in pursuing, I would definitely encourage you to reach out and, and to contact me and we can talk about those opportunities. But this is just a really great snapshot of what opportunities we have available um, right now. On top of our really awesome career opportunities, we do offer a really just a great benefit package um, that we want you we want our employees to be able to utilize. So we don't want to just give them a um, benefits package that may cost too much to, to use or just has isn't isn't compatible for what they need. Um, so we offer everything from health, dental, and vision. We do offer profit sharing, which is awesome. So at the end of the year, we'll all come together and talk about what the company made in profit. And then, you know, with that family mindset, that is then shared back to all the employees at an equal rate. So it doesn't matter if you've been with the company for one year, if you've been with the company for five years, um, or if you are in an entry-level role, or if you're in more of a leadership role, we want to give all of our employees an equal amount because every position matters here at Marvin and everyone's contributions um, are fully appreciated. So we have that profit sharing on top of what I mentioned earlier, relocation. Um, if you're looking to go back to school, we'll, we'll assist you in the tuition assistance. Um, we have scholarship opportunities. Um, so we're really excited to help our employees grow and, and get to where their end goal is. What you see here is our core values and what I'm really excited to talk about, especially when we talk about women um, in this industry, is our core values are something that we stand behind and that they go into every decision that we, we do here at Marvin. So do the right thing, be stronger together, think differently, raise the bar, and believe it's possible. So there isn't a decision that is made here at Marvin without ensuring that it aligns with these values and that when we... Um, and that goes all the way into hiring. So we do not want anyone to feel like they aren't welcome here at Marvin, that they don't have what it takes to be a Marvin employee. It does not matter if you're male or female. Um, it doesn't matter about your background, anything like that. We really want to just um, stand behind our values and bring you onto this team and help you succeed. So this is a statement that was made um, by Marvin to really, to really highlight our mission to ensure that we are being, that we're doing the right thing and we're being stronger together. And it says that diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, belonging deserve to be celebrated and embraced. They are basic, fundamental human rights. And our values at Marvin to do the right thing and be stronger together call for us to do more. And until then, we are not living at our values fully. Change and progress won't be easy and it won't happen overnight, but we believe it's possible. In fact, it is imperative. We're committed to doing more. You'll be hearing more from us on our efforts in the future. And this is really just talking, you know, it was mentioned earlier that there may have been um, this idea that it's a man's world out in the construction industry and things like that, but we are here and we are committed to ensure that we are, we are including everyone, um, like I said earlier, and, and we are really excited to see that change and that progress and continue to stand behind our values. So just to talk a little bit more about um, the female workforce here at Marvin, we currently employ 2,029 females, which is 35.5% of all of our employees across our enterprise. And we are only continuing to see that number grow, which is so exciting. Susan Marvin was the president of Marvin from 1995 to 2015, and she did an incredible job. And I think that really just shows how it, it does not matter. Um, like the next bullet point says, females can hold any type of position throughout our enterprise. 
whether that be an entry level position all the way to executive. Um, we, we really want to be that equal opportunity um, employer and we will, like I said, this whole presentation, we are really just looking to give our employees no matter what, um, what they need to grow within. So this is just a little recap on how to get in contact with us. Um, you can see our handles there on the side if you're interested in looking at careers. Um, all of our positions are located on that website. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And then my personal contact information is there. If you ever have any questions, um, no matter the location, um, I can get you in contact with whoever may be assisting in, in hiring for those roles but I can also answer a lot of different questions you have about Marvin, and I'd be so excited to be able to have any of those conversations with anyone who's interested. Thank you, Audrey. Audrey, you know, I know when you and I have talked on the phone, you know, you've, you've talked about how Marvin really is uh, trying to attract more people to Northern Minnesota. And now that it's spring, it seems, oh, really doable. Uh, that conversation in December might think, oh, <laughs> yeah. do I want to move up north? But uh, all kidding aside, um, I know, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about your attraction to the War Road uh, facility? Yeah, Liz, thank you so much for calling that out. And um, I was going to include that on in the slide about a couple slides back. So thank you again. But right now, Marvin is an offering a ton of incentives. Um, we are offering a full time part-time or seasonal sign-on bonus. So if you sign on full-time, that's a $2,500 sign-on bonus that we're offering. We also offer relocation bonus. So if you're interested in relocating to Warroad, um, we, can, we have assistance in, in helping you get here. Um, we also include commuter incentives. So if you're within distance and you're not really looking to relocate, but there is a, a drive that you have to do, we will, um, we will give you, we will pay for your commute. And then we'll also um, have lodging options. So if you're looking for more temporary housing, um, maybe you want to just work our weekend shift. And so you just need to be in War Road Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We have that option available as well. So um, there's a ton of incentives. And that's really highlighting War Road. We also have incentives um, across the board at our different locations. They do vary a bit, um, but we, we do offer quite a few incentives at all of our locations, which if you had more information, more questions on that, I'd also be happy to answer those. Great, and that's a good um, option. I liked how you said the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, I know one person who has worked a three day, 36 hour shift for years and he's loved it. You know, it's really worked well for he, him and his family. So that's, yeah. that's cool that you've got lots of different options. Yeah, and you know, on top of that, Liz, we as a company, we understand that weekends and that time off may be really important for people or they really value that time. Um, so we've also moved to a four model, uh, excuse me, a 10 hour, four day a week model um, at many of our locations. So we're working 10 hours, four days a week. And if we, when we do work overtime, so our overtime is mandatory, but then that is on Friday. So you always have that, that weekend off um, and we know that that's very valuable. And so we have shifted to really ensure, like we have shifted to ensure that we're meeting um, what our employees' needs are. Great, thank you. Yeah, I've put your Marvin uh, webpage URL in the chat and I recommend anyone um, on this call to reach out to Audrey if you have more questions about, um, you know, whether Marvin's the right fit for you. So good, thank you. And Liz, if I may, I, I do see there's a couple questions mm -hmm. here. Um, one, you know, Anne talked about her last corporate employer. I think I really just want to call attention to that family-owned company that we are. It is nothing but a family here. And so, again, we really ensure that everyone feels a part of that family, no matter what. And no one is just an employee or an employee number. We, we're all contributing and we're all working so hard and Marvin really celebrates that and really ensures that that family feel is in that everyday work. Um, and then when Marissa asked about the compensation for women, compensation is the same no matter um, if you're a male, female, no matter what. So 
we do have a wide range um, here in World specifically. We pay anywhere from 16 to 20, 25 an hour. Um, our other locations do vary, but they're very similar. Um, but again, really, it does not matter if you're male or female. Everyone gets an equal amount of pay, and that's something that we stand behind with our values. Great. Thank you. That's really important to call out. Uh, thank you to Marvin. Let's move over to SM Henches and the team from Henches is there waiting. Donna Coyman and her colleague. Hello, thanks for inviting us. We're very excited to be here. Like Liz said, my name is Donna Coyman. I am in responsible for the EEO duties with SM Henches and one of my jobs is to help grow the women and minorities on our workforce. We, and this is Bailey Laboda. She's actually one of our women in construction. And the reason she's joining us today is we actually met her at a hiring fair. It was an in-person hiring fair. And I thought it would be awesome for everyone to see that these hiring fairs do work. Um, she's been with us one year now. And as soon as I go over some of our open positions and a little bit about Henches, I'll turn it over to, to Bailey and she can let you know about her path into construction. We are a family owned construction company um, established in 1981. We're about 12 miles south of Valley Fair in Jordan. And we do everything. We do heavy highway road construction. We do underground utility site development. So we can take a flat piece of land and get it ready for home builders to develop the communities. Um, we do a lot of bridges, mass grading, concrete work, curb and gutter, earthwork, paving. We like to con we like to think of construction as not just a job. It is a long term career. A lot of people in this industry start out as their first job and actually retire in the same industry. So it's not just a job, but it can be a very long-term career. Um, next slide, please. So some of our current projects, we have projects just like most construction companies all over the Twin Cities area. The bulk of our work is in the state of Minnesota. We do about 70% of our work in Minnesota. 30% of it in Iowa. We're just starting to expand and do work in Nevada and Colorado. Um, some of our local construction projects include a new Prague project. Um, we are working on the Brooklyn Park Champlain Interceptor. We have a, the Bass Pond Savage project with the Army Corps of Engineers. We are doing the Cassad 22 improvements in Lesseur. Um, TH 13 in Prior Lake. We have a couple Jordan and Scott County jobs coming up this year. TH 282 in Jordan, TH 169. Um, so we are all over the Twin Cities area. You might be, you do not necessarily report to the Jordan office. You might be for six months reporting to Brooklyn Park. In a couple of months, you might be going to Jordan. So you do get a nice variety of different job locations. Next slide, please. So to apply at SM Henches, um, all you have to do is go to our website and um, you have to click download the application and save it to your computer. We, there are jobs currently available today. We are ready to hire. Some of the positions that we're hiring for um, include concrete crew positions, construction laborers, sewer crew positions, foremen, equipment operators, cleanup crews. But we also have administrative jobs. A lot of people just think of, when you think of a career in construction, you're just thinking of working out in the field. But we do have administrative jobs that are available. Um, and like everyone has said, you do not need experience to be hired for these positions. Um, some of our office jobs include, we have, you know, a payroll department, HR, um, we have accounts payable departments, account receivable, contract management, um, front desk, we have um, rock and trucking admin positions. So there are also 
opportunities to work inside of our office. One of my goals working with the EEO duties, a lot of times we, when we look at the goals on jobs, I want to take it and expand it past just checking a box to meet the goals. My goal is to always expand and exceed the number of women and minorities that we have on jobs. Diversity is needed. Um, it's required to make Hentges a great place for everyone to thrive. And we want, everyone's welcome to apply. Um, let's see here. We do have, we have week, weekly paychecks and we have the office has a different set of benefits than the people working out in the field and working in a union position. You can call me, you can email me and I can go over the different benefits with you. Um, let's see here. Some of the things that we look for, like I said, we do not, you do not need experience. Some of the things we look for is just someone that wants to work hard, cooperate in a team environment, accept direction from a supervisor, work safely, you're dependable, you're punctual. And from there, everything else can be trained, all the different aspects of the job. So do not think, don't stop yourself for, from applying for a job just because you don't think you have enough experience. Our goal is to make all employees be the best qualified person for the job. Um, I'll turn it over to Bailey. She can introduce her path into construction. Like I said, we met her at a hiring event similar to this, and now she's been with us for one year. It's a successful way to hire people, and we can make it happen for you too. Hi, my name is Bailey. Um, I met Donna here and SM Hedges. I initially got started with this as I actually answered an email in my inbox, um, kind of a posting for MinDOT Deed joint project called the Construction Training Program, which was um, looking for qualified individuals to, for women and minorities who are underrepresented in the industry, they wanted to give them training skills and ways they can acquire jobs in these industries. So I kind of took a six week crash course in construction. And part of that was attending job fairs, getting out there, meeting employers and seeing, you know, what you can do. And there's so many things out there you can try. I looked at plumbers. I was a carpenter actually for a year before. Now I'm an apprentice at local 633 as a cement mason. Um, and so, yeah, I think, it's definitely not about the experience. You don't have to be the biggest and the strongest and the tallest guy out there. You just have to show up on time and be dependable, be coachable and teachable, have a great work ethic and be positive. I mean, working with positive people makes a huge difference in your day, even if it's pouring rain all day or snowing. If you're with a positive crew and a good mindset makes the day so much better. So I'm actually taking classes right now in construction math and blueprint reading that's offered through the union. And they've provided a lot of skills I need to really exceed in my chosen path of cement masonry. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to another season here with Hedges and find out more what they have to offer as I continue to grow with them. Thank you. You know, there's a couple of questions coming in, and I think either one of you can um, address it. One person says that she has a goal of operating heavy machinery. Would SM Henches have a training track for something like that, or would you help her get connected to one of the union training programs, or how would that work? Yeah, we can absolutely help her get connected through one of the union training tracks. Um, one of the positions we are currently hiring for is an entry level equipment operator. So I would strongly encourage you to get in touch with me. Um, you do have to um, be approved to work through the union, but we can help you along that path. Thank you. And then someone else was asking, um, is it, well, previously, you know, you had referred to getting, uh, doing work in Nevada or Colorado. And so she's asking, is it competitive to get a job outside of Minnesota? 
do you generally need experience or tenure first? Well, so um, Colorado and Nevada are, are new for us. Um, I do know with Iowa, we have a lot of long-term employees working there, but we are growing. Um, every single year we are expanding and growing. We're now small compared to some of the other companies out there, but we're over 300 employees and this company started in the basement of the Hench's home. So every single year we're taking on bigger projects and expanding. So I think the opportunity is there in every single state that we're going to touch. Okay, thank you. Um, does the cleanup crew fall into the laborers union or which union does that fall into? Yeah, absolutely, it would fall into the laborers union. Um, and same thing, we can help you get sponsored and into the laborers union. Good, thank you. Touch, Bailey, do you wanna to touch on how you got started within the union? Yeah. Um, I started the training I did was with the cement mason union, but I found a job um, being sponsored with the carpentry union actually right off the bat. And the union has always been something I've been eyeing because I know they do the training, they do quality training. I like the fact that the benefits are incredible. I'm supporting two young boys um, as a single mother and the union has been able to really make me make it happen to do this on my own to raise these boys with work that I'm proud of, with benefits that support us. And again, the opportunities for training and for the upgrade classes, I can always pick up skills that really set me apart from anybody else on there on the job site. Um, and then I switched to the Cement Mason Uni here with the Henches, and I've been just more exploring with the Cement Masonry world. And um, it, I think absolutely the best part of the day is taking my boys and showing them the job sites and showing them what I've built, what I made that day, what I've done this week, and just seeing that pride reflected in their eyes too. I absolutely love that. And I would think that's, that's a huge benefit of working in construction. You get to see the work that you've done. You get to see the end result. You can cross a bridge and say, I helped build that bridge. Mm -hmm. I helped build that site. I help um, dredge the river. You know, all these different projects. That is a very huge rewarding benefit of this mm -hmm. career. And like Bailey mentioned, you can, um, once you're in the union, over the winter, she's been taking classes to one of the photos she recently sent me was a picture of her um, working on stairs in cement. And once you're in the union, you can continue to take classes and expand your knowledge and your experience. And you can start as a laborer and spend your entire career as a laborer. You might decide like Bailey, you wanna shift directions and there's so many different avenues you can go in a construction company. Um, start as cement. You might look at some of the equipment and decide that's what you want to get involved in. Um, truck drivers, mechanics, just it's it's endless possibilities. We have, and we do, we have um, several women operators. They operate these big cranes and equipment. And to me, I just think it's the most fascinating thing. Um, to see women in all areas of the construction industry. And, it, and it never, you know, women in construction, we're trying to increase the percentage of women in construction, but it's still every single time I see a woman on the job site, I just feel so proud and so happy. And I just want more women, more minorities, men, everyone's welcome to apply. I just want to be able to increase these percentages on our job sites. Thank you, Donna and Bailey for speaking. You know, so now we've covered Northern Minnesota, Metro with Ryan and uh, SM Henches in the South Metro. I wanna make sure that all of you know about some of the other associations that are in the, in the Twin Cities. Um, Amanda, are you able to say a few more words about these organizations? Oops, you're on mute. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not like go. we haven't been doing this for a year, right? Um, no, honestly, I, I can't. Maybe Dave has worked with them a little bit more. Personally. Okay, well, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Um, I thought maybe you had more information than me. I do know that Project Build and Trades Hub are two metro organizations for um, young adults. These are organizations that are really actively trying to convince um, juniors and seniors in high school and maybe, yeah. you know, 19, 20 year olds who are just trying to figure out their niche. Um, so go to them, especially if you have uh, a young person in yeah. your life. And, and I actually, you know, I think my nephew is starting to go that direction. I don't have um, a niece at that age, but my nephew is going into it. Um, construction hiring connection is run out of the Ramsey County Workforce Solutions, but does cover all of the metro, chcconstruction.net. And I know they have had a job board and other information links to unions and training programs. Um, I don't know a great deal about them either, but uh, go towards that. Um, and then a couple of other training programs. Um, someone else earlier in the hour mentioned the Finishing Trades Institute of the Upper Midways West. If you're interested in the painting or the sheetrock, you know, all of those finishing, they've got a fantastic training hall. I got a, a tour of it once. And um, they actually have a PSEO program for any young person in high school who's who wants a college credit. So they, you know, you can you can contact them or, you know, if you're a career changer, contact them. You know, you don't need the, the college credit, but they'll get you trained. And then, of course, Min State, our Minnesota State uh, College System has training programs at almost every location across the, the state. Amanda, anything else there? You know, go back to the fit, the build, the one more. One more. Yep. The project build. That is something that uh, we do have somebody up in um, Ely or I I International Falls working on. Um, so it's just kind of in the, the planning stages. But yes, that it does ring a bell. And, you know, really 2 and 8 Trades is an initiative as well. Um, our goal is just to provide as much information and um, uh resources really on one page that you might even see a lot of these these um, different initiatives on. So feel free to go to 2 and 8 and kind of look at that. Um, if any of the people on here, especially in the northern part of Minnesota, um, isn't on that or would like to maybe be a part of that 2 and 8 Trades, feel free to reach out to me. Definitely. Great. Thank you. So here's a plug for all of the other events taking place for the Women in Construction Week. Um, go to Eventbrite, same place that, you know, maybe you've registered, pre-registered for this event. Um, even morning yoga tomorrow. So go to that um, and take place more. Hey, I wanted to point out that we have at the at CareerForce, um, the job search area in the middle of careerforcemn.com scroll down and there's a gray bar type in whatever you're looking for either it's construction or painter or welder whatever and you'll get um, job leads you know just like any other job search site and that's a companion site to minnesotaworks.net minnesota's official national labor exchange one shout out to a company that contacted me right before this presentation dbs residential solutions in blaine and duluth have a lot of openings in both locations um, so they wanted me to make sure that you know that uh, go to them if if you're looking for something in that area i'm um, going to post their name in the chat so you can grab that um, when you're when you're doing the search for those positions. And then, hey, if you've never ten, attended uh, any of our other career explore career sessions, I'd love to have you back again next week. I'm curating a conversation about the financial and retirement services industry and then March 23rd government services. 
Um, you can always use careerforcemn.com, explore careers. We have got at least 100 tools on all of that, including a career fair networking calendar on our site too that um, will get you in touch with other companies outside of the construction world that, that are hiring. There is a lot of activity going on right now. So please stay in touch with me if you have questions. I'll get out all of these materials by tomorrow morning. Um, thank you to all of our presenters, 2 and 8 Trades, Ryan, SM Henches, and Marvin. And thanks to the National Association for Women in Construction, Minneapolis St. Paul chapter, Janelle Miller, and the team for all of your work. This is a fantastic event. So we're going to sign off now and um, good luck in your career search.